And today I'm going to talk to none other than Mr. John Corabi, known from the Scream, Rat, Union, Motley Crew, and as the mayor of rock and roll in the Dead Daisies. <laughs> hey there. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm just having breakfast of the champions, coffee and cigarettes. Oh, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I guess you're all up in everything now before the release of the album. Yeah, we're in full swing here. We've got, uh, we're doing interviews and, and you know, preparing because we're leaving um, Monday. Uh, we're heading to the UK. So... Yeah, I'm in uh, full swing here. I'm doing interviews, I'm packing, I'm doing laundry, you know, working out at the gym. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything to stay fit and do all of that on yeah, stage yeah, yeah. stuff. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Light Em Up is out on September 6th, I think. Yep. And I've heard some of it, and uh, I felt like it was a little bit dirtier and a little bit old classic rock is that something that you thought about while recording it you know honestly we don't we don't really think about what we're doing uh it's like you know the manager just goes all right oh you know let's let's do a new record so we just start putting ideas into um kind of like a dropbox folder mm -hmm. and then we everybody flew here to Nashville and we just kind of got together in a room and just started jamming on all these ideas and just quickly throw them together and we just kind of let the songs do what they're going to do develop the way they're going to develop and you know once we're done we have 10 12 15 songs we just sit there and go okay these are the best <laughs> these are the best 10 you know what i mean yeah so, uh, but we we don't really think about it much, no. you know, other than the fact that we have to start the record on this day and have it done by this day. We don't think about anything. No, you just get get it done, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw the video for Let It Ride and we're motorcycle people at home here. So I started wondering if you and Doug get the chance to go out riding between the studio and touring and everything. Well, when we were here and when the guys were here in town, um, we did kind of set up a couple of rides. Um, I was riding to the studio because I live here. So it was just easy for me to get on my bike and go to the studio and work. But um we set up uh it was marty let me see uh a buddy of mine this guy wes myself doug marty and chuck garrick uh from the alice cooper band we just kind of got a bunch of bikes together and we just went out riding and then we we ended up at this uh place here in nashville it's it's north of the city it's called uh scoreboards but it's a huge pub and they have bands playing and they have really good food so we went up there and hung out and tried not to get into too much trouble you know what i mean but yeah. it was uh it was a lot of fun it was it was awesome hanging with the guys in that capacity you know what i mean yeah definitely there's something special about riding for a couple of hours and then feeling that break at the same time as it's great seeing something new or seeing some scenery that you haven't seen before it's well and that's the thing that's why like i wrote the song and i always kind of had that title in mind um you know but there there is something to be said about you know writing mm -hmm. Like I, I was, you know, somebody asked me yesterday, we were doing interviews and he's like, well, what, you know, why, why the motorcycle thing? And I said, you know, it, it's weird. Like 
everyday life, it you know, it, it seems to cause a lot of stress, whether it's paying your bills or you're arguing with your wife or your husband or whatever. And I said, when you get on a bike, it's like this thing where you, you got to kind of really focus on riding because most cars don't pay attention to bikers. So you're really locked in with this bike and you're constantly looking around, but there's something about the freedom and the hair blowing and it's just you and this machine. And I said, I love that. I love that kind of freedom. Do you know what I mean? That, that it, cause it makes you forget everything else. It's everything goes away when you're sitting on a bike. So he was like, Oh, okay. I get it. You know what I mean? So it, it's really just about that freedom. And there's a couple lines in there in the song where, you know, it says, uh, you know, people getting bolder and it's getting pretty old around here. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, just, you know, shit talking and politics and religion and business and work and paying your bills. It's like, I just love even if it's only 30 minutes from here to another place, like I love being on the bike and just being able to forget everything. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing about riders as well. I feel like when you meet other bikers, they don't really care what your background is. You're just another biker. Right. Yeah. But it's the same. It's kind of the same when you go to, which is why I love what we do for a living. It's the same going to a concert. You know, there's 2,000 people in front of you. And, you know, I don't know what, I don't know, like here in America, we have the conservative and the liberal party. And we're very divided. Mm -hmm. But for two hours, I could get 2,000 people in a room and they don't give a shit about any of that. It's just like they're there to hear the music and have a good time. Yeah. So it's kind of the same with the bikes and the brotherhood there. Un un unless unless you live in America right now and you're talking about the woke shit with Harley Davidson, which I, I don't for the life of me can't I can't wrap my head around any of that shit. So whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. But I don't think if you're on the road and you see another biker in trouble, no one's going to ask if you enjoy your Harley. I don't think so. Well, and it's funny, even my wife the other day, she was, we were riding, because I have two bikes. I have, I have, uh, they're both Harleys. I have a two-wheeler and then I have a trike. Um, I don't like riding my wife on the two-wheeler with the traffic and the potholes and everything. Mm -hmm. In, in town so she was laughing she goes when when you guys like when you pass another biker she goes you both put your hand down and you do like this signal what does that mean and you're like uh oh, you're just saying hi and be safe mm -hmm. you know but it's like this little two finger salute you know what i mean yep. and um she goes oh that's so cool and i go yeah it's like i'm pretty sure any bike, any bike that passes going the opposite direction, you watch. Every one of them will do it. Mm. And she, she was like, "Wow, that's that's really cool." You know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's just it's just a cool little freedom that I enjoy. So, I get you totally. <laughs> <laughs> so, titles. On Friday, you're gonna release a new single. And it's called, I want to be your bitch. Yes. Yes. Have you had any backlash on the title or are your fans grown up enough to take it? Uh, you know, personally, I it, like it, it's, it's just a tongue in cheek, funny little, uh, little thing. And if you know what it's, I, I, I don't really, I don't, I don't want to say I don't care, but it again, like, if anybody gets upset about it, I, I I can't help you with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's it's committed. We put it on the thing. Record the record 
the record sleeves are already printed. So just, you know, it, I, I, like this whole political thing, I'm overthinking and, you know, I, I don't really, I don't get into it. I have a phrase that I say, and it's like, you may not like something I say, you may not like something I do, but you know what? I'm staying in my lane. You stay in your lane and we will have no issues at all. But the title's just, a, it's a tongue in cheek, funny thing. Like Iggy Pop years ago had the song, I Want to Be Your Dog. And when we were working on this song, we, we were kind of like, oh man, this has kind of got like this funny, you know, a little bit of a punky, snotty little attitude. Um, but, uh, when we were doing the lyrics, we just, um, we, we kind of made it about, this is going to sound goofy, but I've been in situations where I was really mad at like one of my ex-girlfriends, you know, she was gorgeous, but one of my ex-girlfriends, I, I was like, oh God, this girl's driving me crazy, da 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 and she just kind of stepped out of the shower and dropped her towel and started getting dressed. And then it was like, wait, what was I mad about? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things where you're in a relationship for the, you're, you're not thinking with this head up here. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> So I, I, it's just about a girl that's just spending your money. She's just like this kind of bratty little girl, you know what I mean? Just doing all the wrong things, but you're like, okay, the sex is awesome. So fuck it. I'll just let her do what she wants. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's just, I want to be your bitch. Yeah. I think it was Hinder doing a song like the sex is so much better when you're mad at me. Maybe there's something yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. So, I know the plans are to go to England, the UK, on Monday. After that, what are the plans after the release? Uh, well, we're doing all of the UK. Or, well, let me rephrase. I don't know if we're going to Ireland or not, but we're doing uh, Scotland, all of England, and Wales. And then we're going to take a little break because that's one of the things that we've kind of figured out now. We're getting older, so we have to learn how to pace ourselves. Um, we're going to take a couple weeks off, uh, and then we're going to head over to Europe. And we're going to do, uh, I don't know, we start in November. So we'll probably work right up till you know, the holidays mm -hmm. and then pick it right back up next year. Yeah. That's, I mean, I've been following you for a long, long time, and I'm always amazed at how much time and effort you put in to every album and tour. I think it's amazing. Thank you. Well, you know what? Honestly, though, we, like I was just saying earlier, one of my earlier interviews today, they, um, we, we enjoy each other's company. I've known Doug since he was 15 years old, 16 years old. So we're all really long time good friends. Um, and even after our shows, like it's, we're not one of those bands where everybody goes their own direction. You know what I mean? It's like when we're on the, on tour, we go back to the hotel and uh, you know, we'll kind of give each other a nod, you know, just, uh, you know, it's like, yep, I'll meet you at the bar. <laughs> and we just sit there and we talk about, hey, man, how's your wife? How are the kids? Da, 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 you know, and we just talk about our families and life and tell jokes. And so it's really cool to be involved with the band. I love the music we do. I love the fact that we're, you know, touring and doing all the things that we do. But we're friends. Yeah. First. So it's it's. A pretty awesome situation. 
Because that's one of the things I think people react to a lot since it's a musical collective, you do your own thing and then you come back. That's the way it works, right? And some people have a hard time realizing that you really are friends. You're capable of doing this. If you want to go do your own thing, nobody's mad at you. It's not like they've kicked you out. It's just, okay, you go do you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, I, I still do solo acoustic shows, you know, but just to keep everything neat and tidy, you know, I'll get offered shows or a tour, you know, so I'll pick the phone up before I say yes. Mm -hmm. I'll pick the phone up or my manager and he'll call the Dead Daisies manager and just say, hey, we just got offered this tour. Do you have anything going? Blah, blah, blah. And in most cases, they just go, nah, man, it's cool. Go, you know, go have some fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a pretty cool situation. Um, you know, everybody is first and foremost uh, committed uh, to the daisies. Uh, you know, even, even with uh, the writing of music, um, I, any of the music that I write and I have a little home studio here, so I'll just write and I'll record some stuff. And the idea is to offer it to the daisies first. And if they go, well, I like that one or I like this one, but I'm not, not so much th that song and that song, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I just go, okay. So I give the daisies the songs that they like. And then the songs that, it's not that they're bad songs, but it just might not fit with what the Daisies is doing mm. uh, stylistically. So I'll just finish them up here at my house and put them out on my own. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah, but you make it look so easy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I, I've been to... I think two or three shows on your solo tours here in Sweden. And I feel like when you're out alone, it's, it's fun. It's like you do it because it's fun and you enjoy telling your stories and get the crowd involved in what you do. And uh, I know you've had some guest artists like uh, Connie Bloom and other awesome people. What's the best part about touring solo? Well, it's, you know, again, most of the tours that I do, I travel with this guy, gentleman, Nicholas, and uh, he's from Switzerland. So he's got like all the rail thing. My favorite thing traveling though over there is the ferries mm -hmm. and the trains. I love most of the shows that I do. I go from place to place by train. Not a lot of air travel. No. And I love that. That's something that here in America, we don't have a rail system the way Europe does. So for me, you know, I love, you know, getting on a train in Switzerland. And then I go right to the dining car with Nicholas and we'll get a couple bottles of wine and some pasta and we go through the Alps and just some of the stuff, man, it's just, it's amazing because we don't get to do that here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but I, yeah, again, it's just, it's just me, an acoustic guitar, a voice, telling some stories, telling some bad jokes, <laughs> you know, and, and, and seeing some pals, like you said, Connie and, and, and some of my friends in, in Europe. And so I, I love doing it. If I'm not, if I'm not uh, working with the daisies, I love doing that kind of stuff because, uh, you know, it's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun. Yeah. So I, I've got the audiobook for uh, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. I haven't started listening yet, but what can I expect? Because I, I was thinking about listening to it at work, but I'm not sure if it's suitable. If it's through speakers, it's probably not suitable. <laughs> if it's headphones, knock yourself out. It's all good, <laughs> but <laughs> I would, it. I would, I wouldn't listen to it at work through speakers. No, no, I, I thought so. <laughs> no, I really like 
I like the way you tell stories because it's real. You're not like glamming anything up. You're not, well, you know, pretending like it's better than it is. And I really like that about you. No, you know, honestly, I just, uh, you know, if anybody ever sits there and says, I've never done anything stupid, they're full of shit. So I, I sit there, you know, I'll tell my, even my wife, she'll ask me a question and I'll tell her some God awful story about some dumb shit that I did when I was younger or whatever. And, you know, she just sits there and she shakes her head. She goes, well, thanks for the truth. And I'm like, well, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, you know what I mean? Then just stay in bed. But I, when we did the book, I just wanted to be honest. Now, I will say that I did tone some things down because there were some people in my life that in the past that I was maybe mad at or, uh, for example, some ex-girlfriends or ex-wives or whatever. I didn't they've moved on and now they're married and they've got a life or kids or whatever. So I didn't want to totally throw them under the bus. Do you know what I mean? But I yeah. tried to be as honest and paint the picture without saying what it was that I was really wanted to say. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, cause my intention wasn't to hurt anybody. It was just to say, here's my life. Here's all the shit that I've gone through. Good, bad, and indifferent. Here's all the shit and enjoy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever. I can't wait to listen to it. I've, I've saved it because there's still a bit left of the Swedish summer. So I'm waiting for the darker days and I'll just sit and laugh at work. I bet that's where where in where in Sweden are you are you um, in the, no Kalmar. It's on the east side, okay. pretty far down. Um, so we're, we're still a couple of weeks away from fall and, uh, I'm out as much as I can just to feel the D vitamins pushing yeah, into yeah, my yeah, skin. Same. I know I was telling my, 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 it's funny, but my wife is actually, uh, first generation born in America. Mm -hmm. Her mother was from England, but her father's Danish. And uh, I was telling her something. I think it was, I was telling her about, uh, it was years ago uh, with the, I think it was Rat. I played the Swedish Rock Festival, Sweden Rock Fest. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, yeah, I said, it's really weird, man. In the summer, I go, it, it, it's like dark for like four hours. And then it's it's just daylight. I said, you can literally go out at like 11 o'clock at night. And it looks like, it's not like two o'clock in the afternoon. But I said, it's kind of like dinner time. It's just mm -hmm. a little dark, but it, it's still daylight. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, that would be awesome. You know, because she's a, she's born and born and raised in California, so she's a summertime girl. Yeah. But she goes, I don't think I'd be able to stand the winters. I go, yeah, because it's like the complete opposite. Yep. And I, I that's what I was saying. Don't don't they prescribe uh, solariums? Yeah. For some people, yeah, yeah. They, the doctor will say, hey, you need to go sit in a yep. tanning bed for a minute. Yep, light there, light therapy. They've got rooms with you know, uh, solar lamps. It's it's amazing that they could do it, but uh, I wonder where they live. Maybe it's up north because during winter it's like dark all the time there, and then during the yeah. summer it's light, really light all the day, all the night. Yeah, so is that like Omia? Yeah, Omia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know yeah. you've been there because uh, I don't know if you remember uh, in Eskilstuna. Uh, I did an interview with you when you were on tour, uh, and it was the same venue where I met you in 1998 with the Union, and I had the oh, poster okay. from that tour 
and you asked Nico, have I been to Ubi? Like, yeah. That's Maybe you funny. don't remember, but yeah. I love it over there. I I went. I hope I I don't know if I'm I'm not sure if we're coming to Scandinavia at all. But I love I love uh, I do love coming to Sweden because I love the uh, Pitipana. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. best. It, it's with the, the egg or no egg? Egg and uh, yes. beets, beets. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Okay, the only way to eat it. <laughs> well. I've listened to the album and I really, really love it. It's going to be like a road trip album for the next year, I think. So, I, well, I appreciate it. So, yeah, hopefully we'll meet again in like six months or something up here. And uh, I'll come and I'll be right in front of the stage. I'll be the big girl with the blue hair as always. Pointing to my <laughs> you know. It's my oh, yes, 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 yes. This I remember. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, going to mess. Good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been awesome. And no worries, darling. Let's make sure we can meet up again when you're over here. I would love that. Yeah, we'll have some. We'll have some pitti panna and a, and a, and an ale. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> have a great All day, right, darling. You too, babe. Bye bye. bye.